welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, The Lockup, Episode 3. I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, always joining my co-host. Jenny Ruiz. This week, where did we talk about all the oh, wonderful things? Oh, it's like things. you were waiting for me to keep going. Yeah, I thought it was going to get, I, I didn't just expect the Junior Ruiz. You expected, like, I expected a, a title more. to go yeah. with it? Yeah, I haven't thought of one yet. Still I there. expect, like last week, I didn't even get to bust out the lockup. You got all excited and were like, the lockup. I was like, there, this motherfucker got some energy from being hungover. <laughs> but uh, diving right in, man. Do it. Uh, some good stuff on Raw this week before we get into news. Figure we could just talk about some little bit of wrestling. Uh, apparently, I mean, it's obvious if you have been paying attention to wrestling, they're giving the Divas a little more of a push. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a, uh, well... God, I'm not even sure if it was a three-way match. Let me just stop you for a second. Yeah. In terms of the whole hashtag give Divas a chance mm-hmm. and AJ Lee starting that and mm-hmm. then retiring, mm-hmm. would you say that's the equivalent to a rapper in a freestyle battle and when he's done, he just like, bang, and drops, drops the mic and walks away? Could be. I don't Could know be. why I thought about that. I'm still waiting for the Colt Cabana AJ Lee episode where she comes on and talks a bunch of shit about WWE. Not for another, at least until the end of her contract. Oh, oh, she still has a contract with them? Yeah. When you retire, you you still have to wait out the rest of your contract. Oh. It's like retirement is a, it's a mutual agreement. You know, like you're not quitting and they're not firing you. It's just like, okay, we know you're done. You're done. Right. Go retire, but you can't do anything until your contract expires. It's not like the 90-day no-compete clause mm-hmm. because that comes after the contract. Right, right. You know, they just, they're releasing her from her contract without any uh, legal... That's funny because you know they wanted, they had Alberto Del Rio. They wanted him to uh, uh, a year, mm-hmm. which is insane. Yeah, but that's beside the point. So anyway, Raw this week, they're on, over in the UK. Paige's home turf. Yeah, kind of like a battle royal between the. Actually, it was a battle royal. Yeah. Now that I think about it, um, man, some uh, some sloppy wrestling dude happened in the Divas division. Not particularly in this battle royal. I believe it was uh, Cameron and Foxy Brown. Who the hell is Foxy Brown? I don't know why Alicia I call her Foxy. Fox? Alicia Fox. I always call her Foxy Brown. My bad. Alicia <laughs> Fox. I and um, I think Natalia. And man, they gave Cameron the match, but why? Dude, she needs to go back on NXT because. Natty did her her the patented. I don't even know what that's called. It's the it's the Jim the Anvil Nightheart clothesline where she does the spin. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, Cameron's dropping to the ground before contact's even made. Ouch! So the timing was off. Like, wait, that girl has timing issues. She made Eva Marie look like a good wrestler last Ooh. week. So I don't know. And then they gave her the match on top of it. So I don't understand that. Like I said last week, man, Natalia deserves that shit. Oh, yeah. Natalia deserves a solid reign. And then give it to Paige. Paige is new. Paige definitely deserves it. <clears throat> um, stipulations on the Orton-Rollins match. Very interesting. Totally. Now, the fact that I will be at Extreme Rules next week yeah. is just that much more sweeter because I get to witness this cage match in person. I've never witnessed the cage match in person before. Oh, yeah. And I am sitting front row, lower level, right off the floor. Nice. So I will be like... So you're getting bam. your cage cherry popped? Yes, sir. Now, here's here's the interesting thing. How... This, this with the stipulation now that Orton can't use the RKO. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless whether he could use it or he can't, he's not going over. There's no way they're going to build Seth Rollins up the way they did. We talked about how they were secretly building yeah, him up absolutely. under our noses, you know? Absolutely. There's no way they're going that route and giving Rollins the win at WrestleMania to have him lose it a month later at Extreme Rules, mm-hmm. which isn't even, like, a huge, one of the yeah, huge right, not even. You know what I'm saying? So you knew going into it, Orton wasn't going to win. But now you take away the RKO, and you definitely know he's not winning because unlike other superstars... Randy Orton doesn't have other finishers he can go with. Right. Unless it's like a quick roll up or something like, or escaping the cage, which hardly ever happens anymore. Right. But what are, what else do you have? You know, at least with like Undertaker, he could finish you. If let's say they ban the tombstone in in the match, 
He still has the last ride. He still has a choke slam. He's totally. still got the uh, the triangle choke. Mm -hmm. So there's other ways. With Orton, no. And you can't say punt because the punt is more of a heel Orton thing. And they use that usually to write somebody off of TV. Right. So with Orton being a face, you can't have him have a win in a heel way. Now, is this a title match? Yeah, it's for the belt. <clears throat> now, who's to say that uh, Rollins doesn't drop the belt to him just to get it back at payback? Nah, won't you don't think so? Nah, okay. I don't. I don't see that because Orton is one of those. Orton is so established now; he doesn't need a title mm -hmm. at all. If anything, if Brian leading into the whole Daniel Bryan thing later, but before we get there, I just want to say that if Brian were not to be IC champ right now, the only other person I would like to see that belt on is Randy Orton because for some reason I believe he can give it so much more. Not not with the exclusion of Orton, and even with the exclusion of Ziggler. I think Orton would be the guy. Like he's got his name is at that right. point where when he has the belt, it's like putting the. Well, I still don't give a shit about the U.S. title, but that's like putting could kind of compare. So you're you're saying that title. you could see Orton giving the the IC belt some legitimacy. Yes, yes, right but that's moving you know to something else. But going back to this cage match mm -hmm. and the stipulation, or uh, unfortunately Orton's not going over. Right. You know, I mean, you'll have him try maybe to escape the cage, mm -hmm. and like J and J security comes and they they bash the cage. Right. His yeah. Head totally. or, you know, or maybe as he's jumping over the cage, Rollin comes out on the other side, and Rollins gets you know the uh, the ref sees him hit the ground first or something. Regardless of what happens, Orton is not walking away with it. Um, hell, I could see him getting pissed and using the RKO right. if they wanted to take it to payback or whatever pay per view is afterwards. That would make sense. And it's just. Just getting so frustrated that he does end up using the RKO and in a, an extreme ha -ha, fashion, you know, maybe off the top of the cage. That would be so sick. That would be tits. But I, yeah, but and then because he did that, the rest is qualifying. Totally, he gets pissed and then he somehow cons Rollins to give him yet one more match, either at the next pay per view or on Raw or something. Right. And then during that match, that'd be their final, and then whoever is the next challenger, because. Um, you know, doing that. But the other, the other finish I can think of is because Bray Wyatt revealed who he was talking to. And it was Randy Orton. So, unless they do something like, what finish was that? Uh, the Dean Ambrose and uh, was it Rollins? Where they were in the cage match a couple pay-per-views ago. And the finish was Bray Wyatt came out like the hologram. Yeah, it was that was Hell in the Cell, wasn't it? I believe so. It was Hell in the Cell, yeah. So, unless they do something similar where Bray Wyatt comes out and he costs Orton uh, the, the title for some reason or another. Right. That's all I can think of. So you're thinking that's they're leading to a Bray Wyatt? Well, yeah, they have to because how how much longer are they going to prolong it now that Wyatt has revealed that he was talking to Orton? True that. True, true. You know what I'm saying? So now Matt, it's like, all right, you already said it, you got to go. I really enjoy watching Orton beat the shit out of Rollins, so it's it's become a, a high point of, of WWE for me. Now, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. No, I was that was it. That's, that, was, that was all I had to say. All right. Are you... Well, I was going to go into something else, but I don't know what you have. So just, well, I'll bring it up later if need be. No, go, go I mean, No, it has nothing to do with it. It was moving on, kind of. Okay, cool. Right on, man. Right. Um, the John Cena sucks chant, I don't think I've heard. I've heard Cena sucks. Yeah. But I've never heard John Cena sucks. So well, i got to hear those Brits. Yeah, I mean, hey, you're going to do it, dude. Yeah. All the way. Like, and I love that they they did it in time with his music. Yeah. It was really, it was pretty great crowd, dude, there. Yeah, oh, great yeah. crowd, man. They have to be, dude. How often do they get those WWE events yeah, no, in the United States? Um, they get it once, twice a year. What do you think about John Cena saying something we mentioned last week that we had said? Well, it's obvious now if he's going to face Rusev, Extreme Rules. Mm -hmm. That what's the point of him coming out and defending the title every week? Yeah. Well, on SmackDown, he came out and said, you know, yeah, I have this match, but who's to say Rusev doesn't face someone else? Do you think, obviously, there's only a week to go now. Yeah, well, it's this coming Sunday. Yeah, so is there a possibility that he drops the U.S. belt to somebody else? In of course not. Do you think they put Rusev over in that match? That's a good question. Um, I would... I, I... Or are they just going to give Cena a massive U.S. title run and then he'll retire? Oh, no. He ain't going to retire no time soon. No, you don't think so? Nah. He hasn't really had because there's nobody injuries, else man. there. He's, doesn't right, seem right, very right. injury prone. But who's going to take his place right now? Yeah, no, that's true. You don't, you don't have anybody. That's true. As far as fan wise, of course it'd be Daniel Bryan. Yeah. But he can't do it right now. Orton, 
won't be that top guy. He'll never be. He'll be so the way I look at Cena Orton is the way I looked at Orton, or excuse me, Cena Punk. Mm-hmm. Punk was never the number one guy. He's never the Cena. He wasn't the Stone Cold. He wasn't Rock. He wasn't Hogan. Yeah, no, Punk was always the second guy. You know, right there, he was the workhorse. Yeah, even if he, had, even though he had the belt, he still wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't like the guy. Yeah, it was always like it was. Punk Cena was Austin Rock, and it all depends on who you talk to because some people be like Stone Cold all day, and the other people be like, well, the Rock. Yeah, totally. You know, but it, and I love both of them equally. But if I had to pick one, I'd put Austin over Rock. Yeah, totally. You know what I'm saying? I love The Rock, dude. So it's the same way. I, I love Austin, Punk way more than I love Austin Cena. All day. But I would put Cena over yeah. Punk. So it's the same thing. If Cena leaves now, who do you put? You don't have... Orton is not the, the number two guy. Maybe number three. Daniel Bryan is the number two guy. Yeah. But due to health issues and you know uncertainty, and plus the company doesn't want him, he doesn't have to look, who do you have? WWE wants well, him to be Roman Reigns, uh, but... I was going to say, you know, SmackDown doesn't really perverse, uh, provide too many noteworthy things. <clears throat> uh, they did give us John Cena, Daniel Bryant versus Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Mm-hmm. Um, really good match, dude. Did you hear about what happened before the match started with the UK fans? Yeah. Uh, with the, with the, the them getting in the rings? Yeah, and they jumped in the ring yeah, totally. and they started wrestling before the match. Yeah, I saw like a small like twenty second video. It kind of pisses me off. One of the guys gave the other one. A yeah, the bottom. WWE didn't just release the whole thing for us to see because that would have been. I would have loved to have seen that. They said the Cena got into it. and He even counted the three when the guy pretended to pin him. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I saw that they like all stood back and just let it go down. Yeah, well, you, but yeah. Uh, it was a really good match. Uh, and in fact, it uh, leads me to something I was going to bring up later, but I might as well bring it up now since it's relevant to what we're talking about. Uh, they found out medically that Dan Bryan has a concussion. Mm-hmm. Um, it would do a lot to explain why he's been in a lot of six-man tag matches. Yeah, they're trying to protect him. Didn't really they knew pro- he was injured. They didn't know to the extent. Yeah, he didn't really participate a whole lot in that tag match. I didn't know this until recently, but reflecting on it, it's just like, yeah, he has been kind of. So that's uh, it's it, apparently he's still suffering problems from his his Jeez. surgery. Yeah, yeah. So I mean. You know, the, their number two spot is now uncertain. That's what I'm saying. And it, it, it can't, the company, as much as the company wants Reigns to be in that number one spot. It's it, going to take time. Oh, definitely. The fans are starting to warm up to him, though. I can, I can feel though. a little bit. It's getting there. I don't want to hear, leading into it, though, I don't want to see Reigns and Big Show again. He needs a new friggin' line, dude. Like, believe that. Not this even Reigns. Really I don't mind the Reigns part. It's the Big Show part. Yeah, Big Show needs to go. Just sit down, dude. Like, it's, he's getting old. You can tell he's having trouble walking down the ring. Like, it's, that match has no interest. Like, there's I mean, nothing. It, I feel like giving him. What kind him, of match is last man standing match, I think? Yeah. I feel like giving him that Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Trophy. That was good. Go on, dude. It's your time's done. You've been doing this for a long time. You know, why do they keep pulling Mark Henry back out? You know Mark Henry can do shit. Why the hell has Big Show and Mark Henry not teamed up and went after the tag belts? Um, I don't know. I'm waiting for that to happen. Then I'll be on Big Show's side. Uh, the last great thing coming out of SmackDown for me, and I've read that... Was the show ending? No. Yeah, besides <laughs> the end of the show, was the miz Miz Dow match. Winner takes rights. Dude, I missed that. How, what happened? To, uh, well, I guess it's going to be Extreme Rules. Okay. And whoever wins gets the rights to continue using the Miz name and the movesets. Okay. And I have read that there are rumors that they are going to shelf Miz. Nice. So, which I think kind of sucks. I would almost prefer to see Miz win and Damian Sandow come into his own as his own guy. That would be good. Riding on the coattails of Miz. But this would also be funny that, you know, now it gives Sandow or Miz Dow. Um, it gives him maybe that run under another character, and maybe with time he'll ease out of it. Maybe this is how they introduce him into mm-hmm. it with uh, because he's went over with the fans like this as opposed right. to going over a standout. You know and and I mean? he's got some way of valeting him now. Oh yeah, Miz Which, or Sandow? Sandow. Okay. Nice. Because she was well, she, she was wasn't in, on TV, and they needed a reason to put her on. She there. was in that Marine movie. She did the Marine movie with the Miz. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then during a Miz TV, he had her out. And he talked a bunch of crap to her about how he was in her because she's wanting like equal. Like I was just as much to star, and then Miz Doc cannot defend her. Whatever. I'm nice to finally see Damian Sandow 
get a push, even if it is under somebody else's name, the dude totally deserves it. Oh, yeah. Guy's a great wrestler. It's it's sad and unfortunate that they didn't stick with the, uh, you know, the, the savior of the lost masses thing. He really had a lot of, I've said it before, a lot of Lanny Poffo in that character. Mm-hmm. And I loved the genius who hasn't lost it a bit when Not we saw his speech. Um, yeah, that's about it for WWE. Moving on to NXT. Oh, quickly, I'll mention TNA. Uh, TNA did the whole X, the, 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 the X division, the X, mm-hmm. whatever the match yeah, was. The, division. the belts yeah. for the tag team champions. Um, the Hardys came out with pretty decent match. Yeah, Hardys yeah. get their first. Uh, Shout out to the Hardys for yeah. uh, their first TNA. That's uh, pretty match. awesome, man. You know, for a team that's been around for a long time. You know, I've all, you know, I was thinking about this yesterday because I, this was something before me and you had discussed what this show was going to be about today. I was thinking like I wanted to mention the Hardys mm-hmm. winning the tag belts. You know, it's in my opinion, it's past due for them in yeah, TNA. Totally. I'm finally, I'm happy they 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 really have the Hardys. In my opinion, will always be specifically Matt will always be those wrestlers where it's just like, dude, they're, they're the Roddy Piper in terms of the work rate for what they do. Mm-hmm. Like, they're all, and I'm, I don't mean Roddy now, I mean Roddy back then. Right. Like, they were there every day, they showed up. Like I said, specifically Matt, nothing, not knocking Jeff, but more Matt, where it's like, dude, he was there, he's got his own shit going on with the Omega Wrestling. He's just, dude, he's just always on top of it. Like, that guy knows what he's doing, and it's unfortunate that the company will not give him the push to be, to try to even be as big a star as, like, what WWE wanted Jeff to be. Right. Um, <clears throat> but the range and, like, the the psychological know-how that Matt Hardy has for the business, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, you know? And for the fact that, like I said, they're finally the tag champs, you know, well-deserved to both these guys, you know? Um... And of course, would I like to see them back in the WWE? You're damn right, because those two guys right now, they would save the tag division. Yeah, totally. You know, bring them back as the Hardys, do not bring them individually. They would save the tag division. And if you bring them back individually, if Matt Hardy does not get it, I mean, I know it was because it was a mirrored real life situation, mm-hmm. but if you don't give Matt Hardy another run the way he had against Edge over the whole Edge lead up, right, Hardy right. Trying, no, I that was, that, yeah. dude, that was phenomenal. Yeah, because, like I said, it was buried in real life. Mm-hmm. But on a TV aspect, it was great. And that gave Matt his big push. I love the whole version one. Uh, you can't laugh at that shit. I mean, you can't look at that shit and not laugh. Yeah, dude, it's, they, were, they were great, man. So, they, were, they still are great. Congratulations to the parties. <clears throat> Absolutely, man. They have had some good highlights in that match. Not as many highlights as I would have liked to have seen with just the setup for that ring. And the fact that it's like a whole X Division type of thing. I, I was looking for more. I will say though that they they definitely have some talent down there. I don't oh, really no feel like doubt. I don't really feel like they know what they're doing. Um, which I'm just going to go ahead and roll into something. I'm totally. We're just going to talk about everything out of order that we discussed it, just because it's how it's <laughs> actually going to progress. Obviously, they have issues down there. Taz left the commentary. Yeah, uh, I said left the company. Period. Uh, yeah, the company. I meant he left. He was on commentary, but he left the company because apparently pay issues. Still apparently, on, they've. Uh, they haven't paid a lot of the staff from the last pay per view. Um, a lot of the guys, that, a lot of guys uh, that are top card everywhere. guys, haven't gotten paid. That's you know that's an issue, man. Apparently, they're not as big of they're not pulling the numbers that Destination XL Destination America, America was figuring that they would. Destination yeah. XL, that's a fucking men's store. I don't know what the problem is. That's Destination X. Destination XL is oh, a men's store. Okay. <laughs> it's a Destination X, store. I guess one was a, a TNA pay-per-view at one point. It might have been. But Destination America, apparently, T- TNA is not pulling the numbers they were expecting. Uh, it's, it's not even pulling Spike numbers from what it was doing last year. Well, less people carry Destination. Like, I, we have Spike at the house. We yeah, yeah that's, that's, you know what? That could very well be the issue. You know? um, I don't think, like, they've got a lot of guys in there that just don't. They've got a lot of talented wrestlers. They don't have talented guys on the mic. Right, okay. And I wonder if that's because they're not taking the time to cultivate and get these guys up to, like WWE does with, with NXT. Like, I feel like WWE takes a lot of time to cultivate their talent before they put them on the big stage, whereas TNA's just got to get who they got to get. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got some good guys. Austin Aries, dude, really impressed with that guy during that. He was him and Bobby Roode tabbed up tag, together again during that tag team uh, mm-hmm. uh, Battle Royal, because everybody was just going at it. It was crazy. 
man, impressive, dude, those guys. Impressive. Um, I mean, there's some talent there. It's really sad that the face of their company and their champion is Kurt Angle. Not to detract from Kurt Angle. No, I'm just Kurt saying Angle he's old. Shit, yeah. He's just old. He's been around for a long time. Kurt Angle should be the guy, put, put, being the one putting the younger guy over, putting the champion over. Like, I think... It's really it really sucks that he didn't come back to the WWE. Well, do you hear why he's champion though? That's what Destination America wanted. Oh, really? Yes, they wanted him because they thought that it would legitimize what the show is by having a real life Olympic gold medalist being the company's champion. Uh, see, I would have liked to have seen see, him when come. You put when you let the the the, the network make the decisions. Yeah, because yeah, that's what happened with WCW. Yeah, well, and that's what that's one of the articles I was reading on the internet said that that TNA is making some of the same missteps that WCW made, mm-hmm. and that's totally true. They're like their knockout division. It's ugh. they do a lot better. The knockouts are a lot better than the divas, though. I do have to say. Well, they've in got terms of wrestling. It's yeah, that's because they're not just pretty faces. I right. think they have more quality in the actual wrestling skill versus looks. Yeah. Whereas you know. Like I said earlier, it's just models who can't even fucking take a simple clothesline. I mean, come on. Right. Which, you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. Which, <laughs> I, what happened with some? some uh, not all. Some. I, I, could, I, could, I could roll into something about NXT and one of their wrestlers that was just this week's past episode. I'll, I'll bring it up later. I want to finish with the Cornell thing. What exactly happened with Angle and why didn't he come back to WWE? Supposedly, um, WWE, well, from what at first was reported, if I remember correctly, um, WWE knowing that they really didn't want Kurt Angle back, but trying to save face, kind of lowballed the offer Mm -hmm. and gave him like all these extreme dates, knowing that he wasn't going to accept. So that way they can sit back and say, well, we tried and he didn't, you know, he told us no, just so they can save face. But Kurt came out and said, if I remember correctly, that uh, he never even had a meeting with them. Really? Yeah. Something well, along the lines of, like, he thought Vince was in charge, and then they told him no, that he has to go through Hunter. And he, I guess they were like, eh. So he said that, uh, that just it really wasn't everything that WWE said. And he said when you're with somebody and they take care of you, he's like, TNA offered him a good amount of money. They offered him the schedule he wanted and he's like lately with his injuries and stuff, they've taken care of it, and they've accommodated him the way he wanted to be so why uh-huh. not to stay there? Yeah. It would have been nice to see him come back and go with Brock one more time. Dude, I was waiting for that guy like for them to announce that he re-signed and then that's it. You don't hear about it and then at the Rumble that dude comes out and he whoops who says ass at WrestleMania. I was waiting for that but no, that didn't happen. Yeah. It's a shame, man. It's a shame. It's a misstep on theirs. Or, dude, why not have him come back and he teams with Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger? Yeah, and totally. And they are the real, real Americans. Americans. Yeah, that would work. That right? would be so badass. Um, what do you think about Al Snow possibly replacing Taz on commentary at TNA? Um, see, I, I like, like Al Snow. I, I like Al Snow as well. Uh, on Tough Enough, he was great. Dude. You know, in the ring, he's just the promos he would cut were hilarious. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I fucking fell for it, asshole. <laughs> but um, uh, after actually meeting and talking to Al Snow last year at C2E2, dude, uh-huh. that dude is, he's a barrel of laughs, man. I, I would i would enjoy him as a color commentator. Well, that's what Taz was, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I almost think that I like Taz as a wrestler. I don't feel like Taz had enough pers- te- personality to be That's who he really was. Commentator. Really? Yeah, that that's Taz. What what you hear on the mic, yeah. that's Taz. He's one of those like, this is who I am. Fuck you if you don't like it. Yeah, and, you know, I don't like it. <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> Who's not working now, bitch? No. <laughs> you? Eh, whatever. That's beside the point. <laughs> Asshole. Dude, if Taz hears this shit. He's gonna fucking knock on your door. Like, I know, and you know, and, and you know what it'll be? It'll be that out. situation where fifteen years ago. We were on our way to an ECW show in Milwaukee, and I was talking about how I would whoop Justin Credible's ass. Like, if I ever saw Justin Credible, dude, that guy is a bitch. I can't stand him. I didn't like his shtick. If I ever saw that motherfucker, I would whoop his ass. So we get to Milwaukee like an hour early. 
We parked the car. It's cold out. I don't have a jacket. I remember some homeless woman tried to ask me for money. I was like, man, fuck you. Give me your coat. I'll give you a dollar. Wow, you were an asshole. Yeah, I was an asshole. I was a young kid. I was like 23, 24. And we went to McDonald's to grab something to eat and just to wait for the show to start. And who the fuck walks into McDonald's? But just incredible, <laughs> and one of the ball, and one of the baldies. No bullshit. And my friends are like, "Oh shit, dude! There's just incredible. Go whip his ass." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about having to eat crow, dude. True story, man. It's a true story. Hey, uh, Taz is gonna fucking meet Taz. Who was that shit you were saying in your fucking I'm like, piece uh, of shit podcast? Uh, I'm like, I'm sorry, sir. Could you give me a suplex so I have a good story. But seriously, like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? Who in their right mind would ever fucking think that you'd actually run into someone you were talking shit about kicking their ass from television? Yeah, right. Like, there he is, standing in line, getting a cheeseburger. What the fuck were they doing at eating McDonald's before a wrestling match? It was ECW, man. That's true. And the, by the way, the baldy that was with them, the little short one, and that guy was like a brick shit house, dude. I'd be more, I was more scared to walk up and say anything to the motherfuckers because that guy might kill me. Five foot two fucking just brick shit house, man. That guy was huge. Embarrassing as hell, man. Embarrassing as hell. Um, I'm going to get to one more piece of news before I, I jump into TNA because I got a lot about TNA I'd like to talk about. Oh, we're still going. I thought we were done with TNA. Uh, no, not TNA. NXT. NXT. Yeah, I'm done with TNA. The Al Snow's last little bit of TNA I had. Uh, I, I'd like to say I had more to talk about on Lucha Underground, but I'm still trying to figure out who everybody is there. Man, fucking great talent there. And I, I still, I know I said this last week, I love the way they do their show. You've got to check that out. One of these days, if you've got time, we'll just have to sit down and watch an episode. If I actually get here day. on time. Yeah, if you get here on time. Yeah, hell, if you got here when you were supposed to, we could have watched like four. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I haven't heard anything recently about this with Ray Mysterio. What happens to when, you're, when you run? Hey, man, yeah, when you got shit to do, shit happens, I understand. Ray Mysterio. Um... I heard he was going to get charged with murder in Tijuana. I heard that as well. I actually researched it last night, prepping for today. Couldn't find any kind of update on what's going on with that. Really? Nothing. Hmm. Um, in my opinion, man, it's, you know, it's, it's wrestling. Shit happens, dude. Can you he really be blamed for something that he's done a, a hundred thousand times, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, shit happens, accident ha- accidents happen. I think when you get into the ring as a professional, you know, I mean, I'm sure you're not thinking, this could be my last match, but you you have to think shit happens. Mm-hmm. Like, look what happened to Draz. Yeah. Draz had a pretty decent puke. He had a pretty decent career going to WWE at the time, and then fucking broke his neck and he's paralyzed now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't expect that to happen, but you've got to be like, I got to go be careful out there. You never know what's going to happen. Do I really know how the guy died? I wasn't there. I don't really know. Is it a tragedy? Absolutely, it's a tragedy. Yeah. But should he be, you know, charged with murder? That I think that's just crazy. You're just you. You would agree that? Well, yeah, that I'm, just, I'm nodding my head here, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost just impossible. But then again, that that's, even, that, you know, that's the laws down there. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Like if that were to happen in the states, that wouldn't even come up as talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would just be a tragedy. Right. Right. <clears throat> Whereas, like, people are they're, they're, people are sending Ray Mysterio death threats. Yeah, I heard about that. It's ridiculous, man. It was an accident. I'm sure he feels terrible because he started... The guy wrestled his first match with Ray Mysterio. Yeah. I'm sure fucking Ray feels terrible. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, who, how could you feel good about that stuff? So, and to lighten the mood now, let's move to NXT. Um, oh, we're going to talk about Sasha Banks. We're, Sasha Banks, not on NXT this week. Aww. I know you love Sasha Banks. I don't know why. She's the boss. Yeah, whatever. If she's the boss, then she needs to fire Solomon Crow because that guy sucks. <laughs> All right? I feel like they're trying really hard to push that guy, and he's terrible. He's got a terrible hairstyle that's hiding this massive bald spot. It's even worse than how Kevin Smith, and, and no offense to Kevin Smith, I love him. I know if you ever heard this, he would just laugh too. Because Kevin knows he tries to hide that ball spot. Yeah. Maybe not as much now as he used to. But this Solomon Crow guy, I showed you the hair. It's like yeah. 10 feet fucking tall, and there's a ring of death right in the middle, man. <laughs> and then... <laughs> ring of death, he calls it. <laughs> yeah, that's... 
hey man, as a man with a full head of hair at 40, I, I would be tragically sad if I was a young man and didn't end like was balding. I think you got the road right in the going middle. on, the gray streak right Yeah, there. I totally got the gray. I got the, what I call the Mr. Fantastic. That's Rogue, man. Rogue, that, yeah, that too. Because Mr. Fantastic's got it up here. That's true. Yeah, he's got the sides. Uh, you got the streak. You got I Rogue. You got the streak. I'm gonna start calling you Sugar. Damn. Just don't call me Marie. We'll be all right. <laughs> so this guy sucks, Big okay? Big Marie. Like, not only does he have a horrible hairstyle and a big bald spot and just an annoying shtick, he was wrestling C.J. Parker, who is a dirty hippie. Um, do, <laughs> I, I want to know, do all hippies have to have dreadlocks? Because you know you can't wash that shit, right? So that automatically makes you a dirty hippie. And C.J. Parker, I'm not calling him a dirty hippie. I mean, that's his shtick, right? Right. Save Earth and also he's a hippie. Yeah. Dirty hippie. So he's, well, it was because he's not with the company anymore. Yeah, apparently he's gone now. So Solomon Crow's got him down in the corner. And he's kicking him in the face, right? So any decent... And I'm not even a pro wrestler. I'm not like... I'm just a fan. But in my opinion, you grab that top ropes, ropes yeah. and you just start doing the fake stop. Right, right. This motherfucker is kicking and completely going past his head. Oh. Now, you could blame this partially on cameras because it's not like that's a live show. So it's something they could have fixed in the editing room. Right. But they showed it at least four times. Oh, man. Him kicking past his head. Oh. It was terrible. One it's of those. just like, come like, on. It's just blatant, and I'll never forget it. Yeah. Ken Shamrock versus Steve Blackman on Monday Night Raw. And Ken Shamrock grabs Steve Blackman for a reversal, right? He's going to Irish whip him into the turnbuckle. And the camera's right there at the moment. And he looks right at Steve Blackman. He's like, reverse, man. I mean, clear as day. I'm like, oh, dude. Or like when uh, Val Venus uh, was dating um, Ken Shamrock's quote-unquote sister. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, what are you doing here at ringside? What are you doing? Slap me. What are you doing? And she slaps him. I was like, oh, too blatant. Like, I, we know it's a work. Yeah. But don't, totally. I mean, try to hide it as much as possible. Yeah, Shamrock just. That's why I like watching the matches with guys with long hair. Because when their hair is drooped over and they got somebody in the headlock or whatever, you know that's what they're yeah, communicating. Yeah, totally. You know, but you don't see it. It's the the... the the seeing is believing kind mm-hmm. of thing, and you know you don't see it, so it's like yeah, right. When you hear, you hear someone say reversal, it's like uh yeah, right. <clears throat> it's like you just fucked up, son. Yeah, it's like rookie's got better better skills than that. Not yeah, Reigns got better mic skills. Yeah, than that. Roman Reigns does. Um, Baron Corbin, that dude's a badass. That guy continues to fuck people up. He was an NFL and he player, is right? Intense as hell, was he? I believe so. I'm not well, sure. Man, he's intense, dude. Yeah. Like, you talk about, like, the 50-yard stare, and, like, the eye. That guy's got it, dude. Got it. And, again, another match where he just came out and whooped ass in, like, 10 seconds. I honestly think NXT should should be a separate brand. I don't like the fact that when you bring the NXT guys up to the main roster, they lose their steam. It's like there's something about being in NXT that gives these like an aura to these guys. I think that what it is is you get lost in the big like you're a big fish. You get lost in the mix. Yeah, yeah. All of the ascension. Yeah. Now Adrian Neville's come up and had some pretty excellent matches since he's come. He hasn't won. All, I'm sorry. He won one by DQ. Yeah. But the one against Rollins. Yeah, he's gotten his ass kicked. Like yeah. Pretty much, but they've been quality matches. Unlike the Ascension, who you know. Now here's my thing. They just screwed. Now, now that everybody knows that you know NXT's on the network, you can watch it, and you know who these guys are, and you wonder when they're coming up, when they're coming up, when they come up. Is it one of those things where it's just like, like, oh God, I don't know. I lost my train of thought for a second, but it's just like, okay, he's there because he was a big name in NXT. He ain't shitting the main roster. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it sucks because there's some guys in NXT <clears throat> that you don't want that to happen to. Um, Kenta, Hideo Itami, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, a.k.a. Kevin Steen, Sami Zayn. Those guys are like the main core. Nothing against anybody else, but those are the main ones on NXT. Now, when they come up from NXT to the main roster, you know, like you look, they're big guys in NXT. But when you put them against a Cena or an Orton or a Rollins or a Reigns, yeah, they just or, get lost in the mix. You know, I, I mean, and comparison, size comparison wise too. I mean, it's, yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Then they well, that's why small. they really, really need to bring back that cruiserweight belt. I think. Yeah. Because I mean, there's not 
a lot of big dudes. Here, here's another thought I had. You know, since I drive for a living, I'm always on the road in my mind. Half the time they like to prank. Got, they like they like to pull the rib and give me a uh, a van that has no radio. Nice. Um, doesn't even display the time. So you got plenty of time to think. Yes. Sami Zayn, mm -hmm. can he be the next Daniel Bryan? And I say that in terms of the heart that the guy has. There's a lot of comparisons. You know, the heart and, and, and the, um, I don't want to say the underground, but the indie scene kind of backgrounds, uh -huh. the fan connection to them, you know, with Daniel Bryan, you get the Yes Chant, which is the most overcrowded reaction ever besides Cena Yeah, stuff. seriously. But then with Sami Zayn, you get the ole, 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 ole you know? Yeah. So it's just like, it's a lot of comparisons Which there. doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah, me either. Considering he's like a white ginger dude. Yeah, and he's from Canada, <clears> and he's, um... Uh, he's not Jewish. Uh, I forgot, but it has nothing to do with Mexico. And Ole is a, yeah, like a Spanish name. Right. Like but anyways, soccer, you would think. I, but I equate just, Ole Ole to soccer. And he's not again. Sami Zayn is not the biggest guy. Neither is Daniel Bryan. Yeah, no. I could see Sami Zayn like when Daniel when they have to, and it looks like it's coming up soon. But when Daniel Bryan has to take a step back, you know, with all the injuries and then pulling him off the tour and. Like, the guy in the last year has had a shit career. Yeah, totally. You know, he wins the belt at WrestleMania, loses it a month later, gets injured, he's out for nine months. Comes back, has a slow build, wins the belt, now he's injured. Now, the question is, when is he going to drop it? Um, I see Sami Zayn being the next Daniel Bryan. And he him coming up to the main roster and the fans getting behind him the way they got behind Daniel Bryan. Right. But didn't it take a while for them to get behind Bryan like they did? It happened at, after WrestleMania 28 when he lost to Sheamus in the 18 seconds, remember? After that, the very next night on Raw, the fans were behind him. And ever since then, it was just the fans had always been behind him. It was the company waiting to put him in that storyline. You know? Right. I totally... If, is there anybody out there else who thinks that Sami Zayn and, can be the next Daniel Bryan I or think, equivalent? Let me know in the comment I don't section. Think yeah, please let us know anything in the com anything that you would like to add to this conversation. Conversation, comment away. Find us on Facebook, hit the Facebook page. We'll plug in our later. Emails, you know. Are we done? Um, no. <laughs> okay, we'll plug later. <clears throat> Sami Zayn, I don't like him. Really? I don't like him. I, I can't. I was stand wondering why you were so Zane. quiet that whole time. I cannot fucking stand Sami Zayn. Wow. I just don't like him. Something about his personality, I just can't stand him. I don't like him. He had a hell of a match with Rhino this week, though. Yeah who's, like, really porked up right now. And I always say that because I just watched uh, old uh, old WC, or PC Monday Night, w. or bleh, I just watched an old Raw okay. during the wars, you okay. know, the WCW, ECW, WWF wars. Yeah. And Rhino was out, and I was like, wow, Rhino's actually put on some weight. I didn't realize it, because yeah. he didn't really look much different. He looks a little older. Why is he really back, though? I mean, I don't understand why he's in NXT maybe help him build I mean is that what it is they need some some guys to establish guys better because I feel like they're doing a good enough job without bringing up old school guys you know I don't mind him there uh, I like Rhino dude I've always yeah. been a fan of Rhino go go yeah. uh, but they had a hell of a match dude him and Sami Zayn what a, you gotta give Sami Zayn credit that bump he took when uh, Kevin Owens turned on him oh yeah that was vicious you know and he just power bombed him right there on the on the corner of the ring apron that what I like saying, so. man, I like yeah. you, know, I'm like, you don't like that that flying dive he does. I'm not. That's reminiscent to me of Daniel Bryan. See another comparison. Daniel Bryan's got that flying headbutt, yeah. a la Chris Benoit. Sami Zayn's got that flying through the the corner of the ropes. Uh huh. I, it's like, dude, I I totally. I mean, he's all right. He just doesn't really do anything for me. By Sami uh, Zayn action figure, dude. Why is uh, Alex Riley okay? Why is that dude just not wrestling? He has been wrestling. Oh well, yeah, he just started again. But why did he ever quit? Like, was he out due to an injury? Or did WWE know. just not tell you what to do with him? I think that was more the Boy, case. that dude is friggin' ripped, man. Like, you can't really tell sitting behind the Well, they tried to give him a, a brief push, and it didn't work. No. You know, when he, when, remember when he was uh, working with The Miz, and he was The Miz's quote-unquote assistant? Yeah, see, that was probably before I came back to watching. Oh, uh, yeah, because Miz was his mentor in NXT. And when they were doing back when they did that, right, right. And then he brought him the main roster, and he was his assistant. And then it was the same thing with Miz now, where Miz was constantly berating him. And then finally, Riley got tired of it, and just like, no, kiss my ass. 
Right. And uh, they ended up going at it at a pay-per-view, I believe. Well, like him, he's apparently still gunning for Kevin Owens, even though Kevin Owens kicked his ass once. I don't really understand why. Uh, but, man, that guy's jacked, dude. Yeah. He's jacked. I don't I don't see why they just don't get him up on the ring roster. He's got the wrestling. He's got the look, man, the crazy eyes, dude, like uh, every, you know. I, I think they want to take their time with him because, like I said, he was on the main roster at first, but he wasn't ready. Right. Um, so. Dana Brooke debuts, like I told she, you. She what? She debuted. What the hell is she that? She had her debut. Oh. Uh, I was like, what the I fuck? I said debuts. Yeah. Like Iowa. But no, it's, she had her debut. My That's bad. like my cousin Vinny? Yeah, totally. That's what it is. The, the two Utes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like as much as I give WWE shit because all their divas are just like mild looking women, man, this chick's athletic. I told you she's muscular. She has what you would want. She is the quintessential diva. Okay. She has the qualities you would want in a female wrestler. Okay. And uh, she came out there, had a match against Blue Pants. Pretty much dominated Blue Pants the whole time. I really don't get the Blue Pants shtick. Uh, kind of stupid, Blue Pants. For some reason, the NXT universe seems to be behind Blue Pants. You know, she comes out and says, like, Blue Pants. It's like, what? Like, seriously? <laughs> Blue Pants? Like, did Vince come up with this? It's terrible. But Sasha wasn't there. No, there was no Sasha. Nah, I don't week. care. Uh, last thing on NXT, man, still pushing my boys. Enzo Amore and Big Cass. Oh, God. Dude, I love that guy. I don't know what the hell it is about With them. Enzo? Man. Yes. Oh. Both of them. I think they're a great tag team, dude. Oh, they are. In terms of characterization, though, they, they, I don't know, it bothers me. But they're one of their... Unless they take them, like let's say they wanted to repackage them, mm-hmm. you're gonna have to take them off TV for a long time because they're those kinds of guys where their uh, their gimmick is so memorable that they they won't be able to break away from it. Dude, I feel like they could bring those guys up to the main roster and they would fucking flourish you think because so? the tag team division lacks personality, dude. I, I'll give you that. Outside of like the Usos, who are not there anymore. Yeah who, yeah, who have been relegated to the side now. Yeah, because of uh, the injury. And they said he's out for about nine months. Really? Jey Uso. Oh. And they said he's out for about nine months. Man. So um, either they're going to give Jimmy a singles, which they didn't want to do. Right. Or they're just going to go ahead and, because that's why they turned Naomi. Right, right. Yeah, um, no, that, that so makes she's, sense. So he's either going to play a back role or he's going to be singles. Or he's like, just not going to be there. Uh, I, the, the guys, Murphy and whatever, the, the current tag team champions. Blake and Murphy. Blake and Mur- like I can't stand those guys, dude. They're, they're bland. Like, they're, they're totally bland. bland. And, dude, um, Enzo and Big Cass, like, dude, I, I will love say, the shtick. I love I how love Enzo it. comes out in a pair of Jordans. I love that. Dude, he's, like, I remember the first time I saw him, he was more Jersey Shore looking. Yeah. But he was still doing the same shtick. But now he's like shaved the head and doing the crazy blonde, like the, the hair and the blonde beard and the, you know, what what the hell is it? I'm a bona fide. Uh, I'm a bona fide G. And a, the really uh, bada bing bada boom, the yeah. realest dude in the room or something like that. That's right. How you doing? Yeah. That dude, that shit is great, dude. It's a bona fide G and a certified stud, and you can't teach that. Yeah, because you're so off, son. Big Cass is seven feet tall. You can't do that guy. You know what that reminds me of? It's awesome. The DX stick. A little bit. Because DX came out. Well, the out, or the Outlaws, more specifically. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all, they had the same stick. Right. And the crowd was with it, and they did it every match. And that's what they remind me of. Dude, I feel like they could flourish, man. Well, they need to do something. Not them, but the company itself with the tag division. They need to do something. You know... I'm a fan of the tag teams that dress the same. They've been the same. Mm-hmm. Quote, like the Usos. You know, I'm not a fan of tag teams. I mean, I like Kid and Cesaro, don't get me wrong. I'm well, that a seems fan forced. Of, yeah, exactly. I'm not a fan of the forced tag teams together. Like, hey, let's team up. No, I like the guys that are the Rockers, the LOD, the Heart Foundation. Well, they look like they belong together, like the Ascension. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll give you that. Like the Ascension, how they look like they belong. They came in together, they belong together. Right. Ascension and Usos. But... Maybe even the prime time players. A little I bit. I throw them in there, you know. But 
Because I didn't look at it as Titus O'Neil and Darren Young. You look at I, it as the primetime player. Exactly. Yeah. And then, like, when they did the Slater Gator. Yeah. I, I was like, Yeah, nah. Slater Gator? What the fuck? I was like, nah, that the hell? Know. I'm not dealing with that. That was just a waste. Yeah. It just doesn't work. And the... I don't like the Lucha Dragons. I like them. But their shtick works. Yeah, I like them. I don't like Los Matadores. Nobody likes them. I think it's a terrible shtick. I'm, I feel bad for them. Like... They need to just come up with something else because that's just not working, man. Why even? Change? Everybody likes I mean, El they did it, they did, Yeah, they did it for the kids, you know. And stuff yeah, and I could see that, dude. I say change him back to Fernando and Diego, or no, yeah. that's who they are now. Um, Primo and Epico. Just put him back. Now, see, I thought one of those dudes was Sin Cara. No, Sin Cara is one of the Lucha Dragons. Yeah, but who was? I thought. I thought either one of the Primo or Epico became the new Sin Cara when the real Sin Cara left. No, 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 no. You remember Unico? Don't oh, okay. See, I'm getting all confused, man. Unico is the, the current Sin Cara. Okay, it's so see... Because he's got the tattoo. See, that's the problem, is they've made all these Mexican guys so fucking bland and unidentifiable. Epico and Primo Puerto Rican. Okay, my bad. They're Carlitos' uh, brother, okay. brother and cousin. Are they? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. You don't remember when they inducted Carlos Colon to the Hall of Fame? I, I believe didn't it was see that. last year. I, I, I don't. Watch in the Hall of Fame. It was uh, Epico, Primo, and Carlito. They all came out and uh, they inducted Carlos. Well, and it was funny as hell because Carlito was like, he said something of, uh, during the speech along the lines of, this is why I don't work for this company anymore or some shit like that. Dude, I was dying. Well, they've made him all so fucking bland. I miss Carlito. You know, like, look, dude, Eddie Guerrero was awesome. Even Chavo Guerrero wasn't bad. Chavo was cool. I hate but it when they turn him into Kern and White just or whatever. Like, uh, I don't know what they're doing, man. But I feel like that, like the actually the tag team division down in NXT is kind of dead right now. Yeah. Like outside of Enzo and Big Cass, they really don't have anybody. You know, I heard rumors that they're supposed to push Finn Balor to come to the main roster within this year. I'd hate for that to happen. I really would. It, he needs a, he needs a good title run there first. You know, I do you know what yes and no, because let's face it, dude, Owens isn't getting rid of that strap anytime soon. Kevin Owens to me is the Brock Lesnar of NXT. I know it's a you big comparison, so? but that's how I view it. You don't it. think that Sami Zayn will get that belt back from him? You know, that's gonna be the match, but I think see a match like that, you can't do it at an NXT takeover. Because they're making it be a big thing, but it's not a big thing. Right. If you're gonna do something like that, give it to me on a bigger stage. Hell, give it to me a SummerSlam. Hype it up and give them, give them that opportunity at a SummerSlam, regardless of who wins. But if if it's that much because of the situation and, quote-unquote, their history with mm-hmm. NXT, obviously they have history prior as they were a tag team in the indie scene. Uh, Sami Zayn was right, right, yeah. Um, but a match like that, hype it up you know, and give those guys their just due. Or give me a fatal four-way at SummerSlam. I think the bigger pay-per-views, a la Rumble, Mania, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series, each need to have one NXT-themed match. No, it, that would be a great idea, man. You know? It would be a great and idea. And if you want to test the water, test it at a smaller pay-per-view, just to see how it goes. You know, test it at Yeah, I think bank. with, like... Why don't they do an NXT money in the bank? Yeah. You know? I, probably because they don't have enough guys. I mean, there's there's some talent down there. You but throw five or six guys. That's okay. the problem. Is Owens like, is champion. You throw, how, how many guys are typically in a Money in the Bank? Six, seven guys? Six or seven, yeah. So you throw Finn Balor. Totally. You throw Atami. Mm-hmm. You throw, throw in, um, what's his name? Prince Pretty. Yeah, Tyler Breeze. <laughs> um, the other, uh, Corbin. That's the one. Corbin. Cor- you throw yeah. Corbin, and that's Very four Corbin right there. Totally and then man. you can just throw three random guys in yeah. there from NXT who like up and comers. You know, who are just I could throw Sam, Sammy Zayn in there for the hell of it. Did I not say Sammy Zayn? Did you not? I don't remember. Zayn. Corbin, Finn Reese, Balor, Finn Balor. Yeah, you didn't say Zayn because okay. you said Hideo Tommy. Hideo Tommy, Finn Balor. Um, that's Corbin, five. Baron Corbin. Give me any. You give me two fillers. Give me um. Give me Enzo for the hell of it, or Big Cass. Either one, you know, because they're both also singles competitors. Mm-hmm. So give me one, and just throw another guy in there into the mix. Any one of these NXT guys. You're right. Yeah. Hell, fuck. Throw what's his face back down from. Uh... Throw Alex Riley in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Why not? They seem to, like, if if they have to watch from Persian the talent because they haven't brought anybody else in worth shit. I think that's why with, like, the Exodus you see, they just of, signed 
I think nine new NXT with one Did of them they? being uh, Ula Nation. He's supposed to be like I haven't seen any Nations uh, matches, mm-hmm. but I think they just signed him for Ring of Honor. And he's supposed to be like some really big badass that they've been chasing for about a year now. Yeah, dude, what's up with your boy? When is Samoa Joe coming? Because he's already said that him and WWE are talking. Yeah, they're know, trying man. to get him in, and he wants to go. Now here's the question: With Samoa Joe having the background that he does, does he go straight to the main roster? Or do they say, no, we don't give a shit who you are. You're getting filtered through NXT first. Oh, look what they did to Rhino. Why didn't they just throw Rhino in the main roster? Because Rhino's I mean, not. I think Rhino's I think, there for a I different think purpose. Uh, Rhino's there to help you, uh, to bring up the younger stars. He's right, there more I'm, of like okay, an on-screen no, kind of. I, I, I get that. Where he doesn't want the run. He's just there to help out. All Samoa I'm Joe is, comes, <clears> and Samoa Joe is there for a run. They ride. need to not influx too much more because it's already showing. Like, they, they have, like, five or six good singles guys, but that's not enough, man. They need more. And those guys are just going to be fucking nothing when they come to WWE. They're going to just... That's why they, they need another belt, man. NXT? WWE. They need to bring back the Cruiserweight belt. Yeah. See, I never thought... I, I never I never thought having the IC title and the U.S. title made sense. Because aren't they both the same thing? The well, U.S. No. title was just WWE's. Because what's uh, Intercontinental? What the hell does that mean? United States, technically, isn't it? No. no the intercontinents? Other continents. Like, I think that's almost like a... I what does know. that even mean? I don't intercontinental. Know. Anybody out there, because we're too lazy to use Google right now, please comment. What in the world <laughs> exactly does the intercontinental part of the intercontinental title mean? I think mean? you could cover any continent. Well, wouldn't that be the world title? Yeah, it would. So it's like a weaker version of the world title. That's what I'm saying. So why almost couldn't, comparison, so why get couldn't, rid of like, one of them. I understand that the... I understand the Intercontinental title has been around for a long time. And there's, you know, it's it's lineage of the belt. But at this point, man, <laughs> screw lineage. They didn't seem to have a problem ditching the women's title. No. When it was associated with some probably the best women wrestlers ever. You know, dude, if WWE really wanted to... Why not to dump it go with a light heavyweight belt? You know, well, here's, here's what I was getting at with that. If they wanted to incorporate the reality aspect of it, why not kind of turn it into like, okay, in order, and they make they hype up the light heavyweight title or whatever they want to call it, cruiserweight, whatever you want to call uh-huh. it. They hype it up. You get all these great stars who want to compete for it. And they make like a Dolph Ziggler or a Daniel Bryan or all these guys, you know. But here's the catch. They, you have to be under a certain weight class, obviously. But the reality aspect is, you know what? They're going to do a weigh-in. And they have a camera stand on the scale. And they legitly write for, like, okay, these four guys are going are gonna to stand on the scale outside on live TV on Monday Night Raw. And they're really going to go through who loses the most weight. And then we're going to write a story for each one depending on who goes through. So that way we have a plan. Why not incorporate that part of reality into it? You know why? Because us as, quote-unquote, smart marks... We think we know everything. Right. And the WWE's like, no, that's not what you want. This is what you want. And right. they tell us what we want. And we're all like, oh, dude, that is what I want. And we go for it. But th- th- I think that would be cool if they did some kind of aspect. Well, like they, and they need to do something different. You know? They need to do something different. Because, I mean, there's not there's so much talent. And they have so much talent to come up. That what are you going to do with it? I like how they were like, we're going to give... Um, Brian the IC and Scene of the US. And it's going to bring those titles up. That worked when Lesnar was not on TV as the champion. Mm-hmm. Rollins is on TV as the champion now. So now, in a way, it's kind of like spitting on their own idea. Because now you have that main title focused on again. Right. Why the hell do I care about the other two? The other two meant more when they were not, when the, yeah, the main no, totally. wasn't on TV. <clears throat> you know? But whatever. It's complicated, man. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Listen oh, to I the know. fans? I can't. Yeah, it would be nice, you know, but does that ever happen? Rarely. Like, totally rarely. But yeah, bringing Finn Balor up right now would be a mistake. I think that guy needs to percolate a little longer. Perfect. I think they need to give Enzo and Big Cass those tag team belts for a while to rebuild their tag division and then bring those guys up. Because like you said, I mean, I like Cesaro and Tyson's kid together. I think they make a good tag team. I think They're they need to make a jump. Work. I, need think, I think they need to make a title jump. Like you have either, as an example, Owens or Cass and Enzo as whatever champion tags or the NXT, and you have them come up to the main roster the way Flair came to WWE with the World Heavyweight title in the 90s. Right. And you have them, and you know what? I am the NXT champion. And it's just like, they, you know, make it a big deal. Like, I beat everybody in NXT. There's nobody there for me, so I'm bringing my champion, and my, I want some competition here. 
You know what I mean? Right. I think that like, would legitimize it. Instead that. of like how they scrubbed out the Ascension. Yeah. Who were like wrecking the tag team division. Exactly. Imagine if they would have came up. See, another thing is with the Ascension, I think, it was the, the look. Because when they were in NXT, they were a lot more simple, just the plain black. Yeah, totally. Almost uh, like the Acolytes. But they come to NXT. Yeah, the they, over, they, they overthought the look. Exactly. But imagine if they would have kept it simple yeah. and they would have brought the tag belts with them. And not talked all this shit about how they're better than all these great tag teams. Yeah. That would have been great. And then, or, you know, see, the only, reason, so the only way there. I would have let that slide had the look been simple and they had the belts with them. Yeah, totally. Then they could talk shit and because they, like, they have a platform to stand people. on. Like, you know what? Yeah, we're the champs and they just they stop everybody out. I think it's like out. a weird old school approach to them. Why almost? not come out and like during a random ass tag match, just have them run out and like wreck, every, wreck everybody right? leave. Do it week after week right? after week. Why the hell not? No, instead, we're going to do like we did in the 80s, and we're going to push you by making you wrestle scrubs no one has ever seen in the ring before. Jobbers. And then we're going to let JBL talk shit about you, and, and then we're going to you. put you in a ring with a bunch of old fucking dudes that really have no business being in the ring, and then we're going to let them kick your ass. You never, ever disrespect the NWO. Which was just wrong. Don't ever disrespect the NWO. It was wrong, man. It was, you can't tell me that wasn't wrong. I didn't say it was. I just said don't. Hey, you got, you got to leave Billy really Gunn. in that ring, were they? Yeah. You gotta leave Billy Gunn out of there, though. Because Billy Gunn... Well, yeah, but I mean... they That dude can still... He's still cut. Man, New Age Outlaws had the belt within the last year. Yeah. So I really can't just talk shit about them. Yeah. But I mean, bringing back, like, Bradshaw, who's been sitting on the... This was fucking stupid, man. Like, they could have come in and cut their teeth on some real tag teams instead of scrubbing them out like that. And where are they now? They're nowhere. They are might you as well wrestling just, on SmackDown? They might as well just fucking send them back down. Are they wrestling on SmackDown? I haven't seen them lately. The last time I've seen them, they've been part of like those eight-man tag team matches. Yeah. Which is just fucking ridiculous. They were in the Battle Royal at WrestleMania, right? Yeah. They weren't even in the tag match. No. Wow. You know Connor was part of the, uh, the early NXTs when they were still voting. Like, who would win NXT? Oh, really? Yeah. I was watching... Because uh, I was trying to find the NXT episode where they converted and it went over from being like a game show-esque kind of thing right, to competition its to its own thing. I was trying to w- find that and there's a few that I'm like, is this it? Is this it? And I can't tell. But I started watching, I think it's like season four or season five. I'm not sure. And they introduced him as Connor. That's the messed up thing. Like, I, I look back at old NXT when it was still FT, it was FTW, right? No, man. What the hell was it? OVW. Whatever, FTW man. is fuck the world. That's Taz's thing. So you're going back to the Taz thing. <laughs> Whatever. I, I, I think back to like Damian Sandow. Damian Sandow had a great run down there, dude. Yeah. And he was up on the main roster mm-hmm. also. It's just there's a balance, man, and they need to figure it out. But uh, that's that's all we got. That's for pretty this much week, what we got man. this week. Uh, we won't be back uh, next week. Unfortunately, we will be at C2E2 covering everything we can there. Hopefully, we come back and we've got a couple of um, superstar interviews. I've got some guys uh, in line that I'm hoping to talk to. I'm not going to mention any names in case it doesn't happen. But it uh, should be fun, and it should be, quote-unquote, too sweet. Too yeah. sweet. Yeah. But uh, for everything Comics Remix, check out ComicsRemix.com. You can find us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Comics Remix. You can find us at Twitter at Comics Remix and at The Spinner Rack. Bam. That's right. Hitting all the cylinders, man. I'm on it. Good stuff, man. And then right we'll on. be back in two weeks. Yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. Talking about the fallout from Payback and... Mm-hmm. The pay, uh, Extreme Rules. Extreme I'll be Rules. At ex- payback uh, is the next I'll one. I'll be at Extreme Rules this coming Sunday, so uh, come back next week. I'll, I'll let you know how it was from a fan perspective. Yeah. You know? But it uh, should be fun. should be a lot of fun. I Honestly, I'm looking forward to that cage match, man. Yeah, it's going to be a good match. I wonder if there'll be any CM Punk chance. You know there will. Why, why Why would you even ask? It's in Chicago. It's not like your fans can help. And you know, I'm one of those fans that sits there, and I'm like, man, why the hell did they do that? I hate that shit. <laughs> but then when it happens, I'm in the crowd going, see you punk. And then I stop myself like, wait, I'm a dumbass. Like, I'm, a, I'm an ass. Like, come on. But, uh, yeah, for all that and more, like I said, just check out comicsremix.com. You can check out past interviews with uh, professional wrestlers as well. Totally. So Great stuff. Always. Good stuff. So until two weeks from now. Two weeks. Email us if there's anything you'd like to see us talk about. Brian at comicsremix.com. That's right. And junior at comicsremix.com. Let us know. Questions, Join concerns, in. comments. Join in on the discussion, peeps. Oh, show. So next, uh, so so, two weeks from now. See you now. in two weeks. Peace.